What's good, everybody? Chilling on this super dope uh, Thursday night. I am doing my no mosh challenge, and I am almost at 100 pieces of content. So, um, I have an article to release, podcast to release, and then release this video on YouTube and Facebook, and that would be a piece of content. So, there's a bunch of amazing things happening. Uh, one, I released my new single, No Mas. So, you can listen to that on all your major streaming platforms. And I released another single, Self Conscious, produced by Dan, a producer in Japan. Um, yeah, and then we got the CBD Fair and Market coming up this Saturday, free to the public from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then Ven and Bonfils is going to be super dope. So tonight, though, tonight I'm going to be reading Chapter 3 from my book, Ideas of Illusion. So hopefully y'all enjoy I think I'm at almost 70 pieces of content, so it's going to be interesting. I'm almost at the 100 mark, but I'm going to get into Chapter 3 because Chapter 1 is already online. You can actually listen to that on YouTube, Um, and Chapter 2 is kind of (laughs) raunchy, so Chapter 3 is going to be the next thing, so if y'all like it, y'all can order a copy off of davtro.com forward slash shop and there's paperback and ebook available so this is chapter three hopefully y'all can hear me so boom daniel's sleep that night was envied by the gods when he awoke daniel reached towards the nightstand and noticed important belongings missing his phone the shoebox with the gun bullet and wallet all had disappeared You gotta be kidding me. Certainly not a letter sealed with a kiss and a fake number, Daniel said as he stormed around the room, or a kinky game of hide and seek. Daniel pissed off, took no chances. He reached for the room phone to call his bank to cancel his cards and report his cell phone stolen. Daniel gazed out the hotel window while on hold with customer service. So we will start the day like this, Daniel groaned. He sat surprised to see it was approaching noon. Daniel seldom slept past 10 a.m. The bright Texas sun shone brightly through his room window. While on hold with the cell phone company, he detected Regina crossing the street. He threw the hotel phone on the bed and ran out the room as if he spotted an unattached or an unattended baby crossing a busy intersection. He sprinted to the elevator only with his boxer socks and a white undershirt on. Made it, Daniel said out of breath. A little dark-skinned Asian woman, maybe five foot even, stared at Daniel like he was crazy. First floor, please, he asked her with a smile. She pressed the one button and down they went. The little woman looked similar to Lynn. He wondered if Lynn would would look like that when she got older. He sighed and drifted back to regretting that woman staying the night. Three, two, one. The elevator door opened, and he ran straight out the hotel entrance. As he ran, Daniel glimpsed that what could have been one of his cigarette butts from the night before in the bushes and imagined them engulfed in flames while the cigarette landed on it. He focused back to Regina and shouted out to her, Roche, uh, uh, Rach, oh, Regina. She didn't turn around, so he spun it across the street. His feet burned. The street resembled the sidewalk that transformed into a boiling cup of hot lava in the sauna. When the green guy on the crosswalk came up, Daniel darted across the street. Five, four, three. He sensed the world in slow motion as the crosswalks uh, counted the seconds down and Regina walked further away. Two, watch out, someone shouted a few feet in front of him. Daniel wondered who was yelling. He still had one second. That's when it hit him. One. 
They say that near-death experiences can change your life forever. When it hit him, his body elevated in the air, similar to a plane ascending into the clouds. In reality, he was unresponsive on the hood of a maroon Ford Taurus wagon. Daniel peered down at himself laying on the hood of the car. If I die from being hit by a damn Taurus, I have a few choice words for God, Daniel feared. Any repercussions from direct and bold words towards God? Well, I would risk ex- uh, I would risk expressing distaste in the choice of car, except I fear that would guarantee me a one-way ticket to hell with gasoline doused boxes. He corrected himself. At the time, Daniel didn't realize a car had hit him. He thought it was a scattered dream. To him, he crossed the street one moment, blink. Four Taurus, blink. On the ground with the medics, pedestrians, news cameras, blink. Regina, blink. Lynn, blink. Mom, dad, blink. The hotel roof, blink, blink, blink. While being transported by the EMS, he blacked out. When he arrived at the hospital, Daniel regained consciousness momentarily while nurses while nurses pushed him on the stretcher down the hall. They got into one of the emergency rooms and cut open Daniel's dirty undershirt. His legs were bleeding and seriously injured. They put a plastic cup around his face and gas gradually filled it up as he drifted away. When he woke up, Daniel felt weightless as he looked down at himself in a casket. Holy shit, am I on my own funeral? He let the perceived reality sink in before continuing his thought. I get to be with everyone one last time. He had many foul words to conjure up for that Ford Taurus. Daniel floated next to himself. His dead face looks unsatisfied. Daniel overheard his mom asking the mortician, can you make him smile? Sorry, ma'am, he said. No matter what I tried, his jaw muscle won't budge. His mom teared up. Daniel watched as the church filled with family, friends, and co-workers. Everyone he imagined came. As he observed his parents usher everyone into the church for his funeral, he stood amazed with the large turnout. Eddie gave the eulogy. (laughs) Ha, this guy, Daniel said, overjoyed to see his best friend again. His dad held his mother as he tried to keep it together himself. Even Nathan looked distraught. When Nathan came up to his brother's casket to pay his respects, Daniel levitated behind his body to catch what Nathan would say. He never witnessed his brother's face in so much pain. I'm sorry, Daniel, Nathan said, as a single tear slid below his right cheek. I love you, brother, he concluded and walked out of the church. Jasmine waddled as she followed him out. Daniel didn't spot Lynn, and he somewhat expected that. In the back of his mind, he assumed she didn't care or was too hurt to come. Daniel wasn't always that negative or skeptical. He tried to practice positivity, but he grew jaded by the world. He understood why his dead face looked unsatisfied. Daniel always wanted to help the world, to make the scales between good and evil balance. He had confidence in a world where everything wasn't so bottled up and sold. to the masses since earth provided everything people needed to survive. He wanted to make those who held the majority of the wealth, the top 1% of society, pay for leading the world into consumerism. He failed and his service to life was incomplete. His lifeless face displayed failure. As Daniel listed countless things he wanted to do to help the world, his ghost body got hot. He questioned, I still have the fire of passion in my heart I still have senses dead. The funeral ended and people left. Only Daniel's spirit and his body in the casket remained. You look ugly dead, he told himself, sticking his tongue out. A door opened and he figured a funeral guest forgot something. Still making fun of himself, someone came up beside his casket. He casually looked to the right and there stood Lynn. She came. They should have brought Lynn to the emergency room to resuscitate Daniel because his heart jumped seeing her. Lynn sat there for a couple of minutes before speaking. 
If I gave the impression I didn't want to be with you, Daniel, it was wrong. I'm horrible with love. I was afraid that if I gave my heart to you, my grades would suffer. It may sound like a cop-out, she admitted with tears rolling down her face. It did, but Daniel continued to listen. It's too late to tell you, but I love you, Daniel. Daniel jumped up shocked. A bittersweet moment, the possible love of his life confessing her love to him over his dead body. She touched his hand and instantaneously, the life returned to his dead face in the casket. I love you, Daniel, and I can't live without, Lynn declared as she reached in her purse and pulled out a gun. Wait, Lynn, no. Daniel tried to reach for the gun, but she put it to the side of her head. Pow! The sound of a single gunshot echoed in the church. Daniel turned away. He heard gunshots outside. Mom, Dad, Nathan, Eddie, Daniel shouted. As he ran out the church, he scanned the scene. Bodies lay dead in the street. Everyone committed suicide. Is this hell? Daniel questioned as everything descended into darkness. Daniel collapsed to his knees for what seemed like an eternity. At the corner, in the distance, a light shot out and the night sky surrounded him. Before Daniel could grasp reality, he emerged on top of the same hotel roof he stood the night before, surrounded by five hooded figures with no faces and no feet. They appeared to hover above the ground. Standing smack in the center of them, he demanded, Who are you? What do you want? They repeated what he said back to him. Who are you? What do you want? As if the choice was Daniel's. Is it my choice? Daniel got up and tried to walk forward, but his hands and feet melted into the ground with every movement. Daniel closed his eyes, and one of the hooded figures whispered, Those who release control have it. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Daniel saw. The sound of his questions echoed around him. Daniel's weightless consciousness tried to decide if he was dreaming or perhaps he really was dead and his, ghost post, his ghostly post-body consciousness floated in nothingness. He always wondered what it would be like after death. Daniel wasn't convinced people ceased to exist or have thoughts. He didn't, dis he didn't distinguish if consciousness remained the same minus a physical body. Are we different versions of the same being? What if we're all an idea? Daniel wondered. What now? An echo of himself danced around his ears. Who are those hooded people? Repeated in his head. He remained in a state of nothingness. Daniel was in no rush. Where would he even go? Those who release control have it. Why tell me that? I did not try to control anyone. The only thing I tried to do is control my life and look how that turned out. Flashbacks of the church resurfaced on his mind. Why would they do that? Over me? He wanted to cry, scream, and move his arms, something, but he felt nothing. Daniel existed through his memories, darkness, and questions. Am I asking the right questions, he speculated. At that moment, he noticed a breeze across his right cheek. A rush of sensation burst through him for an instant. Something pulled him into the breeze. Do I even want to go back? The breeze blew stronger, and at that time, a faint beam of light appeared. Only that faint light was visible. Daniel tried to move towards it to shine light on himself but the light moved through him as if he did not exist. He continued being pulled by the force of the sporadic breeze toward a never-ending trail of light for hours. Another rush of sensation accumulated in his body again. This time it was physical. His fists now clenched and his arms visibly stretched out. Where am I? Can I go back? Have I left? He thought. The breeze became still and the light disappeared. Is anybody there? Daniel hollered. The unknown force pulled until Daniel realized he was falling. He screamed, help, help. Daniel remained afraid, anxious, and gasped for air. Why won't you stop? Daniel yelled. He came to a sudden halt. Daniel opened his eyes. 
Blinded by the morning sun, warm in his face, he stretched his arms like he had the best nap of his life. No dirty shirt or bloody legs. He laid in the hospital gown with an IV in his left arm. Daniel looked around to find himself in the hospital room. He tried to get a grasp of what happened. The moment he tried to recollect any earlier thoughts on what he experienced, they drifted away. He didn't get up or move. He looked around the room a few times and stared at the ceiling. Boom. End of chapter three of my book, Ideas of Illusion. So thank y'all for writing, uh, viewing. I'm going to put this on to make sure that the audio was good. But uh, yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. I'm going to drop the links to the book in the comments. Peace.